ho, 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 well, well, well. Yet another Monday evening here in the city of Houston at the KPFT Studios. Hi, thank you for tuning in to FM Rager. As always, I'm Connor Clifton, and I'm joined by my host, uh, my co-host, Ned Gale. I am your host. Yes, I, I'm just a parasite. Connor has uh, embedded himself into my body. He's feeding off my nutrients, and it's uh, feeling pretty good. I'm healthier than I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, you eat very well. And me? I eat- Less bacteria than I've ever had in my life. Yeah, that's why you're so skinny, because Thank I you. eat all your fat and all your nutrients. <laughs> uh, so, Ned, let's just jump right into it. How was your freaking weekend? My weekend was good. Uh, took it easy most days, because Sunday we shot for our live show, F and Rager. Oh, man. When is that? That show is tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we shot really late. Oh, uh, yeah. We really... Uh, <laughs> 11th hour here. <laughs> uh, but no, that, that was a really fun shoot. Yeah, I, it was I, good. I'm really happy with the footage. And yeah. it's it's cool because my coworkers keep asking like what's your new house look like and i was able to show them a funny sketch and force them to watch my comedy <laughs> while showing them the house yeah. yeah of course yeah this is the the first sketch that we filmed in the new house a mm-hmm. uh, lot of natural light oh love the natty light in we there. got to, yeah, beautiful we, we got to see how the uh, acoustics were my hearing's bad ned how are the acoustics i don't really you're in the editing room i don't know how it is they're good yeah <laughs> <laughs> could they be better Sure. I don't know. No, it's it's pretty. I mean, the 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 front room is big. It's a shotgun style house. So like all the rooms on the side are like small (laughs) because the the roof just goes down. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, we got our tub. Yeah, the house is very comical. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Our our tub was too close to the wall, Mm -hmm. which uh, came down. Yeah. I had to basically take a knee while it was showering, which was tough because the national anthem was playing outside every day and. Boy, do I support our trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, we finally got the tub moved back, mm-hmm. and now you can take a shower standing up like a big boy. Oh, How it's great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah? Mm, yeah. That's so good. Not a lot of water pressure in that shower. No, no, no. Yeah, I've been getting flat hair. The boys are hitting the top of my head. <laughs> no longer have that clean back of my neck like I was having for a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, d- did we do anything else this weekend? I feel like- uh, Not really. We kind of just sat around, yeah, hung around. What was ready. Friday night? Was there something crazy Friday night? I had Friday Lights or something? You had a date? Yeah, I went to go see Black Clansman. Oh, I had a date too. I was with Zaid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're editing something. Yeah, before. yeah. Oh, man, I can't wait to see how that goes. Ooh. <laughs> uh, one cool thing that we finally have been doing in this new neighborhood, this new house of ours, we're getting to know our neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, we've got these really, really lovely neighbors, Moira and David. Hey, mm-hmm. if you're listening, awesome. Didn't expect you guys <laughs> yeah. to be fans. How did you find this? <laughs> yeah, they must have given us a recommendation to move in. They've mm-hmm. been following us for yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Moira and David are so, so sweet. They've got a cat. What is the name of their cat? Jenny Sunshine. Yeah, I call her Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Big and orange. Uh, but David, today, he just shows up with these oranges. Bearing gifts. Yeah, did that he took from someone else's yard. He took from our, wait, it was the property line yard. Oh, okay. <laughs> he says it's right behind the car there. And I was like, well, you just took these from our tree. Oh, okay. He clearly saw us seeing him pick the oranges and he's like, crap. <laughs> he had to walk <laughs> over and bring them. Yeah. So these oranges, I've never seen anything like them. They were green oranges. <laughs> What, were they, what did he call them? Welcome to Fruit Talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Go That's what the call. FM stands for, Fruit Man, because we're not on <laughs> FM radio. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't know what they were called, but it was it was like an orange, but the, the whole rind of it was, or, it was green, yeah. but, but bright orange on the inside, super sour, super delicious. It, it reminded me of just Photoshop. You yeah, know, I just took off the green thing and it was, oh, that's what orange. you said to him. You said, is this Photoshop? Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. said, no, I am David. And then I asked him if he was the orange bandit. And <laughs> what do you know? He said it was. He said, yeah. Yeah, he said, yeah, he's been going around stealing oranges from everybody and just giving them to other people. He's the Robin Hood in the neighborhood. Uh, but it was. Really, but he's Robin our Hood. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was very awesome to get to talk to him and get to learn these really cool things about all the different fruit that's in our neighborhood. He was he was a good fruit teacher. Yeah, it was, it was a really great learning experience. He was such a great teacher. And speaking of teachers, I'd really love to welcome our guest for today. Please give it up for the very hilarious Dusty Rhodes. Hey, Dusty. Hey, everybody. Oh, my Hi, goodness. Can we hear me? I can hear I you. I can hear me, but I believe you if you can hear me. I, hey, what's going on here? Pump up this mic. Uh, I mean... Oh, geez. Okay, hang on a sec. We're going <laughs> to figure this out. Uh, oh, the mic wasn't on. That would have been... Is it? Oh, no, wait. I'm still mic? not getting any sound yeah. out there. wait a sec. Hang on. <laughs> See if there needs to be any gain on that uh, that part of the mixer. Right here? No, it's fine. Oh, wait, hey, the gain right below the, the plug-in, there's a little knob right there. Yeah, turn that guy up a little bit. Dusty, talk for me turn real quick. Up. No, oh, maybe not. Oh. Wow. You want to try a different input on there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, FM Rager, where where the uh, the technical difficulties come once a week. All right, try now. Now am I? Can you hear me now? Oh, I'm hearing you a little bit. Am I hearing me? I'm, I'm hearing, hearing you. Me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Dusty in the mix. <laughs> Y'all didn't know this. Uh, you couldn't hear Dusty, but she was teaching us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's been through public media before. She's tied uh, not only to KPFT, but also KUHF. Uh, she's one of the host. Uh, no, you're the host. You're the host of The Moth, the storytelling right, yeah. show that we have here in Houston. You're also the host of uh, uh, an open mic here at Rudyard. That's tonight after the show. If you love Dusty so much after hearing her, you can probably go find her over there. <laughs> go follow me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do so much in this town. So where should we start? Yeah, how do you do it? That's so many things in one day. Oh yeah. Spill the beans. Where's your time crystals? I don't know. I don't know. I think I just I I think I'm like I'm I'm diagnosed ADHD ever since I was younger, and I think that just like that makes me just need to do lots of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like everyone always asks me that question, and then they start naming all of the things I do and then I just get really tired. <laughs> I think sometimes oh, someone says it. Me. Actually like, hearing the list. I really yeah. want to go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a random spot. All right, we'll start with your comedian. Mm -hmm. All right, so you have performed at, I believe I saw you at Summerfest once before. Mm -hmm. I've seen you at Come uh, and Take It. Yes. Uh, I've seen you at Come and Take It a couple of times. Fact. And um, does Houston have more festivals with comedy? Have you done more festivals besides the ones um, that I've seen? You I've at? done well. I've done Hell Yes Fest. That's in New Orleans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, no, I mean I've done shows outside, not any other festivals outside of Texas, but then just like random shows. Like I was in New York and I got to do comedy at the Knit, which is the knitting Whoa. factory show that Hannibal Buress started. So that was that was really cool and intimidating because everybody was like, <laughs> it was like next person is a writer for Late Night with so and so, and as seen on Conan O'Brien, and now it's Dusty Rhodes. She's from Houston. She'll yeah. be on FM Rager in a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's all I got. I was like, hey. <laughs> uh, so how long have you been doing comedy? I think like five or six years. It's weird. Cause like the like what we were, what we were talking about earlier for the show, like the reason I do comedy is because of something I did before. Like I was a journalist before I became a teacher and a comedian. See, I didn't know this about you. Connor was, I was like, so what's up? I don't know Dusty super well. What does she do? He's like, well, she used to be a journalist. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. how, how long were you a journalist? So I started at the U of H paper uh, in 2000 and like three or four. Whose house? Uh, who's? <laughs> uh, that was a bad answer, but yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I started there and just started writing, like just started writing, became an editor and then section editor, and then I got hired at the press in like 2006 or seven. Nice. And I was there, I was the assistant night and data, which really is just like a fancy term for a staff writer who wrote all the stories about what's coming up on the weekend, mm -hmm. but not like um, an exhaustive list of everything there is to do in the weekend in one story, like, you know, like picking the stories, yeah, that, like yeah. the really things, and then- More highlighting. Writing, but, yeah, and um, I wrote a lot about comedy because I really loved comedy. And so because I wrote a lot, and it was crazy because I got to interview like all these crazy good comedians back then and this is before I even wanted to do stand up like Patrice O'Neill, like uh. Lewis Black, like like yeah, like Greg Giraldo, uh Maria Bamford, just all of these comedians that now I'm just like I can't believe like Dimitri Martin, like I opened for him at Heights Theater like a year ago and had a conversation with him about how when I was in college I interviewed him because he did a set at the Laugh Stop. That is so awesome. Yeah, and so it was like weird because I felt like I was like studying comedy. It's almost like I studied comedy because I was like writing for the paper, but then I was also just, I, was, I really loved comedy, so I would just get to talk to all these comedians about like what they did. And then uh, I got laid off at the press and I didn't really want to do journalism anymore. I was kind of just burnt out. So then I yeah. was like, well, I'm just going to, just go back to school and become a teacher because I think that's what I just need to do anyways. Like I just felt it. And then once I started teaching and I was hanging out with a lot of stand-ups, like Chase Jerusso is like one of my oldest friends going back. I used mm -hmm. to hang out with Chase just like all the time. And one day I was just like, um, it's when New Movement came to town and they used to do the night at Mango's, like Lisa. Oh, uh, Relativity? Yeah. yeah. And um, they used to do an open mic and I would hang out with Lisa all the time and Amy. And one day they were just like, why don't you just get up there and try stand-up? And I just did it. And it was crazy. I was just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I went up there and I like, everything started like very storytellingly, which is another, that's the reason that I got the moth. Um, and that's how, and then I just like kept doing it because it wasn't awful every time. That how was, was your first set? That's, I like, I have two 
things that I hate about myself in life. <laughs> <laughs> I have the fact that my first year teaching and my first time doing stand up were both amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I will never like, top. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like saying it because it's like the weirdest things. So There's like, no. And I'm like, no, it is. Like, I went up, I told this story that I told to my friends before. It di didn't suck. Uh, I was like, well received. But it's also like a new movement audience. So, every, I mean, of course, it's like everyone's yeah, just like yeah. on your side, but it's these two things that like, I hate when I'm like, so how was your first time? I'm just always like, it's, uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but the funny thing was I remember telling Chase, I called him the next day to tell him that I did. I was like, oh man, I went up and like didn't suck. And he goes, oh man, that's terrible. And I go, why? And he goes, because now the first time mm -hmm. you do bomb, it's going to be awful. And it uh, was. The first time that I bombed, I was like, what? Like, <laughs> first time I did stand up, phenomenal. Second time, <laughs> so bad they burned down the pizza place the night by. <laughs> oh uh, and, then I, and then I did improv for three years before I did stand up again. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when that yeah. happened. Ugh. Oh man. I've, I've never been good at stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I, you do sets I'm more at big, poetry nights. Yeah, I'm more big <laughs> picture, you know? I, I don't even, I do go to poetry and I'm like, wait, what? What is this? Have you have you done stand up at a, a non-comedy yes. open mic? Well, it wasn't non-comedy, but it was in every, like House of Tay that used to be open. Now it's like some fancy restaurant, but it was right there on the Fairview, Fairview in like, uh, yeah, right there by that cleaner. It was called House of Tay. And they had, I think that's where Warren Wright first did his set. Nice. And it was an all ages sort of, but it was an everything open mic. And I used to go there. I think, Chase, I think Chase was the one who brought me there. But yeah, it was like a mixed. It was like poetry. It was music. It was stand up. I think a guy juggled once. It was everything. Well, the, and the new movements used to be that way. And Fitz used to be that way. Yeah, yeah. I remember but both Fitz of those like had more of like a lively tone. But House of Tay, it could go. It could go either way. <laughs> yeah. So you said that you've had storytelling uh, as a big part of your first time telling open mic or doing open mic. Uh, is storytelling still a major part of your comedy, or are you more like quippy? Or? No, I think that there always is. Like I have that sort of just always like underlining. Like everything's always attached. Like yeah, there's definitely always going to be something at the end that comes back to the beginning. Like I'm definitely really that's something that I obsess over. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm gonna tell a joke that lasts. More more than like four minutes or even three minutes the end has to like mention the beginning and i think still yeah like a lot of my my favorite bits all have like a like a, a storyline to them even it like true or not true mm -hmm. well through that you said that that's how you got the the moth gig i was there for the first moth I saw you tell a story, mm -hmm. and I was there for the second one. I saw you hosting. Yeah. I was like, hey, I know her. <laughs> yeah, know. so that worked because so the when the moth, Elizabeth Bailey brought the moth to Houston through KUHF, and she contacted me just like, this was like months before, and she was like, hey, have you heard of the moth? Of course I had. She was like, I'm bringing a moth storytelling chapter to Houston. I'm really pushing for you to be the host. Um, they nice. want to see more than one person, but I really want it to be you. And I was like, okay. She's like, I'll keep you. I'll keep you in touch, of course. So then she says, okay, here's how it's going to work. On the first, so the first storytelling one, you saw it was myself and someone else. Um, I don't want to like out them that they didn't make it. I feel like that's mean. Uh, but myself and someone else were there, and because the moth is random, like you guys have been. So if you don't, if you aren't familiar, the moth, like every person that's on the moth, they get drawn out of a bag. Mm -hmm. But for that show, the other person and I were going to be drawn. Quote, I'm quoting. If you're not watching on TV, <laughs> do you guys see air quotes on the radio? Uh, we we have a sound effect. It's just yeah, quick, quick, quick. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, please so just, add that if not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you just do that every time? Yeah, exactly. So we were drawn out of the bag, and that was our audition. They're like, we want to see each of you tell a story. Nice. And based on that story, just to kind of gauge like how you are in front of a crowd, how do you like how do you deal with it? And uh I kind of knew the other person's story just didn't go well. Like I always felt like I was just like it was like he he had to go first, which is not great. And it was the story was like sad. It was a really good story, but it just wasn't. You know, I think he was like trying to make it lively, and you know what I mean? Because uh -oh. he's like, hey, I have personality, but also this is a story about being addicted to heroin or something. You know? Oh, so okay, yeah. I know who it is now. Yeah. I'm like giving feeding you guys Connor can just clues. Say my names. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, so anyway, so um, so. They, after that, it was like a couple days later that they just called me and they said, hey, we'd like you to be the host if you're interested. And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. And so then I've had a wonderful time since then. I've seen you host that show several times. I used to go to the Moth all the time. Now, Second Tuesdays, 
Now you're yeah, like, now I've seen you enough. I'm yeah. over it. <laughs> I, I started the new show specifically. It's like, I need an excuse. <laughs> uh, but you are phenomenal oh, hosting that you. show. You go above and beyond in making sure every guest feels comfortable, welcome, heard, especially like even if the scores aren't good, you definitely, uh, whenever I would tell a story, you would always make me feel like, hey, you know, my story mattered to someone. Like I could always look out of the corner of my eye and see Dusty being like, ha! Yeah. Yes. yeah, it's funny now because I have like I work at this new school and we have like a culture of like snapping when we agree with someone and it sucks because I sit behind the storytellers and when they say something I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> they stop and like look behind them like am I doing something wrong and I'm like oh no so I'm a, sna- I'm a snapper now that's a that's a thing that's changed in my life oh man well a lot of those storytellers are really old they aren't familiar with just like snapping I know like... I'm like you cats aren't cool <laughs> <laughs> you don't speak jive <laughs> uh, what'd you call me <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have to like warn people now at the beginning that I'm like hey this is a thing because I feel bad I try not to do it like oh like usually I'm like that's the thing that is so hard about being a host and enjoying storytelling is if you're looking at me from the stage you see that like while someone's telling a story we're also sort of multitasking like I have to read the slips you know like we're kind of reading all because we do like the, the, the prompt of like mm-hmm. hey have a quick sentence that relates to the story so um Jessica and Jasper and I are trying to filter through those while I'm still trying to like listen to people because I want to hear their stories but it's like it's sometimes you know it's also it's also hard because I have like super ADHD and I think what people think people's perception ADHD is so different for every person like everybody thinks it looks the same but for me what it is is that someone will say something and it will trigger something in my mind and my mind will think start thinking about that and then I have to be like no go back go back you know like go back to this and so sometimes people start telling a story and they'll say something like oh yeah that's like and then it's like yeah. oh you're done and then i hear applause and i'm like oh, that was 40 great. feet down the ocean yeah. like huh what <laughs> yeah but, yeah i so like i said there are a lot of old storytellers there uh i get the impression that when they tell their stories these are the same stories they've been telling to their friends at the bars for decades yes like, mm-hmm. it's like oh i know exactly how to tie this <laughs> sort of kind of to the theme like yeah, this yeah, is gonna yeah, be yeah. a great story that can always see yeah yeah i go up there i have the theme i got the idea i kind of wing it you whenever i see you tell a story on that stage it looks like you have written something memorized it and then got you know james lipton to teach you how to really <laughs> bring voice to like you are very, wow very good thanks for inviting me on the show where I just get yeah. Yeah. all right i got this huge stack of questions <laughs> yeah. I was like, we'll turn them okay. but you uh, what is your preparation method for this storytelling so sometimes it is a story that i like there are certain stories that i try not to tell as much that I like telling. So like when we do the love hurt story for a long time, like there was like a story, the story, the bed of leaves story, which sorry, I don't know, come to the moth and you'll see it. <laughs> but it's a story that I've told that it like happened to me that fits that theme. And there's a couple of them that fit that theme. And I think also like, I mean, I think that is that reason is that because my stand up is so that way. And I think it's because like a lot of, for me, a lot of the memories I have are just still like, in those moments when things are emotional, they're still so vivid that like, I guess like that's able while why why I feel like I'm able to express them like as they were for me in the moment, because I still can like, like latch on, especially if there are stories from when I young, like when I was younger, I can still very much like latch on to who Dusty was, even though it was like 18 years ago, like who I was 18 years ago. And I think that's part of it is like, I have a joke about that now where like ugly Dusty, like never left me. Like she's still always there. You know what I mean? Like, it's like part of like why people are like, I can't, like, I can't believe you don't have any confidence. And it's like, oh, I grew up ugly. Like, try it. Like it just never goes away. So I feel maybe that's why I don't know. Other than that, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Another thing I've seen you do in terms of storytelling is Big Benchies, which we've done one together. Mm, yeah, we got to do another one. We so really good. do. Oh it's my so god! It was Benchies. so much fun. It was so great. We did the movie Overboard. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, doesn't hold up. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, really creepy. Doesn't hold up. They just remade it. <laughs> did remake it. Oh, I saw that's that. The thing. When you gender swap, it's okay. But... Is that what the new one is? They gender swap? Yeah. I, I, like, Anna I've... Ferris played the handyman who's had it up to here with this rich guy, and she <laughs> lies to him and keeps him as a sex slave. 
that's what the plot of the movie essentially no, that is. That totally. Yeah, I love. We feel. I feel like one of the things I was proud of. We really brought that out. <laughs> like in the movie, we just brought out like how like there's so many great lines from Antoine like playing that character. Oh just, yeah. Like you are the worst kind of person. Uh, just, a, just a creep. <laughs> what What did you guys change the story of the show? Or can you explain Big Benchies real quick uh, for okay, people listening. So Big Benchies are if you haven't gone to Neo Benchy yet, a Neo Benchy is just a five to seven retelling of a movie scene where you take the movie clip, you cut the audio out of it, you write, rewrite the dialogue, and you read it live in front of an audience. Mm-hmm. A big binge is that, but it's like an hour? Yeah. Yeah. So we it's like a full movie, yeah, but still but the, still chopped up. They yeah. take the movie and then re they totally change the plot. They don't do that every time. They did that for ours. They totally changed the plot up. So like Overboard in the beginning was like Goldie Hawn is this rich woman that Kurt Russell's making like a shoe cabinet for. She falls off a boat and is like in the hospital and unconscious and he comes in and basically is like that's my wife and takes her back to his home where he forces her to be his wife and by be his wife I mean take care of his kids and have sex with him while he goes out with his friends until one day Oh we should she, we should clarify she has amnesia. She has amnesia the whole time so she <laughs> believes him. So that's what makes it a comedy. It's funny. She doesn't remember and she's bad at being a housewife. She's so bad. <laughs> yeah. Um and, and then the shoe cabinet business yeah, went up during yeah. the year. <laughs> and then we changed it to she starts off she is like the, our re our restructure of it was she 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 was in that family like she was the mom to this family and they are poor and at one point she remembers it's just like everything's too much for her and she remembers she had this like rich boyfriend <laughs> and so she like and the rich boyfriend comes to visit and she leaves with him and then lives this like am- like she's like on a yacht or whatever and then realizes she- well then she's like kind of like missing it but kind of loving it and it ends because she's like kind of realizes she like misses her husband she goes to find her like old wedding ring from her husband and she ends up like falling off the boat oh, it's no. like essentially what happens at the beginning yeah. of the real movie yeah. and she's dead you just reversed it and, no, yeah. and then she it dies was, <laughs> yeah it was called love isn't real and we all die alone yeah. it was really fun though yeah it, the process is just really fun the director was going through something so. yeah. oh she was yeah well, <laughs> when she told me the name I was like you okay yeah <laughs> you want to just tell you about for drinks we don't have to process this through art we can just like convert hey that's what art's for baby yeah Yeah. all right so now going back to neo benchies i've seen you do a collection of amazing neo benchies uh for heb with (laughs) jj watt (laughs) it's jj the commercials themselves are jj watt and the ceo of heb being like "Mm, this food's good and it's cheap (laughs) we're eating together in my backyard yeah Yeah. but what i've seen you do do you want to explain this okay yeah for the first one that i did well they both had an underlying theme where Scott from HEB had Shanghai JJ Watts dad <laughs> and he's trying to move in on JJ Watts mom. So the first commercial is like an opening of JJ Watt eating ice cream and it's sort of his mom sort of introducing the fact that he's eating his feelings because his dad is gone. And then the next commercial is like them at Thanksgiving dinner but JJ Watt is like why are you here? Where's my dad? And then the third commercial is actually this like commercial this like fisherman that works for HEB but I turned it into like JJ Watt's dad who's like I got Shanghai. And so that's sort of the progression is like J.J. Watt is like I miss my dad and J.J. Watt's mom is like Scott's my new boyfriend and then the second round I did two of those like I did one with the and then I did a second round of new commercials with the same thing where his dad was still gone and he was trying to like he was kind of trying to get used to it but at that point Scott was trying to like get the other Texans players to be his friend (laughs) so J.J. Watt would like him and they were like nah I still we don't like you either yeah, that was. Fun. I'd like to say once again, that's the storytelling in you. It's just like finding a, a <laughs> string between all these commercials, right. like ten out of ten. Oh. Well, <laughs> we've all done neo benchies, and I think that they can be quite uh, nerve wracking because you get one shot with it, and mm-hmm. you don't really know what's going to hit. You don't really know what's going to land. You just got to have this confidence. But you've also given people an opportunity to workshop jokes in a different way. Like I said earlier, you run an open mic at Rogers. How'd you get started with that? Did you start that open mic? Was it bequeathed to you? It's kind of yes and no. So what had happened is Sherlock's shut down all of a sudden because the bar closed. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Farron, who was doing stand-up back in the day, and he was running shows with Joe Bates called a couple of stand-up guys. And he and I became friends because we started around the same time. And I immediately like called him and was like, when I saw it, like that it had closed, and I was like, we need to, like, you need to call this person at Rudyard's, and you need to tell her that you want to do an open mic there every Monday, um, and you can't ask for anything, 
Because, like I had known the history of like people doing comedy at Red Yards before, and comedy in Red Yards did not have a great history before then. They Can used you to expand do, on that? Uh, a little bit. They had like a night on. Um, they had a night on Tuesdays at Red Yards Comedy Workshop, which was run by like it was a, like it was kind of a revolving door of people that would run it, but it was more so just like the night wasn't very well attended. Like I remember going and I'd be like the only person in the audience. And that's how it was. And this was at a time though, when Houston comedy, like I wrote a story for the press that was called um, funny business. And a lot of comedians hated me after I wrote the story. <laughs> when I say a lot, I mean like the 10, there was like 15 people doing comedy at the time. Houston, 10 of them were upset with me because it was an honest portrayal of the fact that at the time there was a lot, there was really talented people here in Houston. And, and I think like people read it, like comedians read it. And I can, I understand, their feelings of like you're reading it and saying that there's like no one's coming out to comedy shows I'm like yes that is an accurate like, <laughs> portrayal of what's going on right now I'm sorry it hurts you to hear that but it's true and I'm not saying that it's right I'm saying it is a shame because of all the talent that we have because it was back when like Paul Odo was doing t comedy Sarah Talamash when Kristen Linder was like out all the time there were a lot of like great like there were a lot of great comedians going up and doing like Alan Adams was like you could see him out a lot more frequently Bob Bigger stuff there was a lot of really talent Albert DeLeon Owen Dunn I mean there was a lot of talent at the time I think this was just before Al, um, Owen started or maybe right at the same time but there was like a lot of good talent in Houston just no one was interested and I don't know what that had to do so anyways Rutgers was happening and it wasn't going well and also like some of the comedians at the time that were in charge of it weren't exactly like making nice with like the bartenders or the owners because I remember being in the bar at <laughs> Rudyard's when Kevin called the owner and she like turned to someone and was like this is what they're getting if they try to get anything else <laughs> you were they're done and so I, that's why I was very clear with Kevin I was like hey man we have to build a really good relationship if we're going to do this and so I was sort of like Kevin and I were running it together and I was very like hands off though because I knew sort of when I started coming in the scene a lot of people weren't easy about me because I wrote that article and just you know like so I tried to just like I wanted it to happen so I gave him all the support I could and then Kevin just was sort of like I just don't want to do this anymore and I didn't want to see it handed off to someone. One of the reasons I always loved Kevin is I felt that Kevin did what Kevin did because he really wanted to have a place to do comedy. Kevin never wanted to be in charge. Mm -hmm. Like that was not his motivation. And I think that that's something in any entertainment field is you have to look out for like there's people who like there's people who like just want to do it there's people who want to do it and they want power within it and there's people who just want power and found a way to you know access mm -hmm. it and I feel that Kevin was a very humble person that was like I just want to run this night I wanted to have it to be there but then after a while he was just like I just you know a lot of things happened with him and he like he was going to move and so the reason I took it over was like I just want to make sure like and I had to remind myself constantly like you're here to just make this a good place for comedy I think those are the best leaders of the people who are just like they don't want to see it fail they're not there to be the leader they're like i just want this to work so yes. i will do it yeah. Like, yeah and i feel like yeah. every change i made to red Yards was because like there were a lot of people like i remember when i started an email sign up moans and groans and i was like the whole reason i sign have an email sign up is because i hate waiting in lines mm -hmm. and i hate that all of you have to get here like the open mic would start at eight and some of you are getting here at 5 30 or 6 just to start waiting in line doesn't that sound like it sucks <laughs> you know what i mean like so here's a way that none of you have to do that and like oh we have to remember i'm like you can remember on a third <laughs> Or Friday, send an email, send or you an can alarm. wait. And you can, <laughs> if you can get here at five thirty to wait in line, you can send an email Thursday or Friday. And so I just everything I tried to do, I tried to do to a to make comedians feel like they were respected. You also know when you go up on the list, so you don't have to show up there super early. Oh, such a well formatted right? table too. Right. I love that email. <laughs> yeah, and I just like I'm like it's very specific so that everybody knows like what's going on. I can't promise. I try my hardest not to bump people. There are times like before the holidays in those emails I send out to people. I up front I have like another warning that. I'm like, hey, it is it is the holidays, like Thanksgiving and Christmas. You, we are trying to stick to the show, but if I have someone drop in from out of town, you might not. You know what I mean? Like, it might not happen for you. I try to be considerate of people's times because yeah. I want people to be considerate of my time. Mm -hmm. As long as you're considerate to me, and sometimes even when people are not, I try to just give it my best, just because I don't. I want it to be a place that is just like people come to it and say that is a well-run open mic. I want to go back. Yeah. Whether I'm a comedian or an audience member. I'd love to see you run for office and then you pitch something that's like, look, guys, this is going to be better for everyone. Boo! Yes! <laughs> Boo! Yeah. 
<laughs> abortions for all. Boo. We want it Abortions fast for want everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, uh, yeah, totally. like I feel like that sometimes where I'm just like, and I remember Bob Bigger stuff when I first started it, um, and I first started running it that way. And Bob like gave me that advice. Two pieces of advice that I got. One was Bob Biggerstaff that said, no matter what you're going to do, people are just going to complain. So you need to just run it and run it. And then Andy Huggins, who told me when someone was like, things didn't seem fair. Andy Huggins said, F, but he didn't say F. He was like, F fair. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like my two words of advice from Andy Huggins. But it was sort of like an in-between of those where I had to just like pick and like choose. And I feel like I, like the thing I always say is, when Rudyard's will let me know when Rudyard's doesn't need to exist anymore, and when that's the time, then we'll hang our hat, and that'll be it. But like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. when mm-hmm. when people stop coming, when comedians don't want to sign up, when it stops being a good room, that'll happen. And I, when that happens, I will be like, okay, we had a good run. But like, it's still as long as people keep signing up, as long as people still coming out, I want that to be a room because I think it's a really good, yeah. um, yeah. it's a really good place to work out. And like when I talked to like I went to New York this summer and just I remember talking to Ashton who Womack who was a comedian from here who's been in Houston I mean Houston who's been in New York now for um a year, and he just like like every time we met up, Ashton had to like. S- sing the song of Rudyard's so oh. just like how much he missed it he's like people just don't realize how good they got it out there <laughs> like, but I, I as long as like that's that's really all I want from that like um is that but and like then also like I'm human so sometimes I get frustrated because I know like I remember like a couple years ago waking up to a text from Gabe and Andrew and they were like oh man we're at boondocks and there are three like new comics in the corner talking about how you're the ice queen. Uh. <laughs> I was like, okay, like I'll take it. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean like sometimes I'm like, and that's the problem with, I remember talking to like the woman who runs the moth, like the headquarters. She was one time, she's like, sometimes people say that you're unapproachable, Dusty. And I was like, I just don't like, people come at me like all the time. And sometimes I'm like, I need processing time. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I was like, I, I think it's sometimes because I'm a teacher, kids throw, like I'm so used to having to deal with kids and their impatience, but even kids, if I'm like, Hey, I need you to chill out for a second you know what i mean but when i get it from adults sometimes i'm less that is the thing about being a teacher that destroyed like a part of me is that i am really i have little patience for adults and that's been my last <laughs> year mm. was my like new year's resolution like new year <laughs> the, the that's like, it. Like, yeah. but it was like my thing was like i really need to start having more patience again with adults and re- and giving them the same grace that i give my students because sometimes like they're caught in that moment too and i sometimes i forget how young a lot of the stand-up comedians are i always forget how young people are like i think i always just think everyone like we're in the same place we're all the so same we're all age. the same yeah level yeah. out yeah, we exactly. both have a beer in our hand why <laughs> So, that, yeah. that is crazy that you're you're a teacher and then you go on stage. You're literally performing for an audience like all day. I have like three coworkers and I get pissed off at them. I can't imagine <laughs> being in front of kids and then going on stage right. afterwards. That's what like, I tell people all the time. Like it's like any like I tell people like teaching is like a job because I'll say things sometimes. I'm like you have to mm-hmm. realize like uh, it's a job just like we all have. Mm-hmm. But the difference between a lot of jobs and my job is every hour a bell rings and I have thirty different humans <laughs> just uh, coming uh, at me with all of their own stuff. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like I was like it's a lot of just like and, and that's kind of where the ADHD kicks in because my brain's just like we got this like, <laughs> yeah, you, got yeah. a problem, you got a problem we can handle this All right, are, you able, <laughs> are you able to keep up with teen dramas better because you've been working with teens because you said there's just 30 new kids with all their own yeah. crap and you're like oh so Jack and Laura Bro, are pissed oh off man, at each other <laughs> so I try like I try really hard to stay out of it just because Oh my no, gosh. No one can stay out of There's it. There's so <laughs> much of it. But it, no, but the things that, the ways that it affects you is like walking to class. <laughs> Miss Rhodes, I can't sit next to Sarah anymore. <laughs> Why not? I just can't. So can you move us? Because if I sit next to her, I don't know what's going to happen today. <laughs> I'm like, well, I can't just change the entire seating chart for you. So I guess you can just sit at my desk today and I'll work <laughs> something out. That'll probably be fine. Um, but then it's also like one time, oh my gosh, speaking of Sarah, who is a real student, she sat with another girl and they were writing these persuasive essays where we talked about what was, the the prompt was like, what is stronger? Like what kind of love is stronger, camaraderie or romantic love? And they chose... <laughs> I'm like reading their essays out loud because that's what we do. They sit in a group and we all read our essays out. Like when I'm giving them feedback, I'm asking them for explanations. So I'm talking to Sarah and I'm like, so when you say this friend of yours, she doesn't take your advice and then she always gets mad at it. And I'm like reading and I'm like, okay, oh, 
I get what's going on ah. there. There was like a, two of my favorite students who are actually really good friends. I was reading their essays as two boys, and uh, I was like, it was same same essay, and one of them, he was like, you know, me and my friend, we've had a lot of ups and downs. Like the one time that he convinced my girlfriend that she shouldn't go out with me so she would date him. And I go, Benjamin, you're okay with this? And I like I'm explaining it, and the kid is sitting next to him just like – Freezes like this, and I go, oh, "Is that you? <laughs> like, it's you, isn't it? You're the girlfriend stealer." <laughs> oh man, this is rich. I know. <laughs> Everyone so, stand up and yeah, clap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, good. so I always into it, but I'm like in the moment, and if anything, I'll like make jabs about it later on. Yeah. Just like, oh hey, how's it going? <laughs> I was like, is, I was like, is that pencil working for you, or uh, you think your friend is gonna talk it into letting him write with it? Like I was like, like, like weird jokes about it. But I try not to get like when a lot of them like the thing is is that the place that the kids that I work at now like it's funny when people talk about that because yes there still is high school drama and that occurs mm -hmm. but a lot of the times the kids that I talk to when they do come to me with things it is like stuff that I'm just like it's like not drama it's like horrible life stories oh, no. and that's like a lot of it is like a lot like I like I think because like that's such a lot of these kids that's such a like we still have kid drama like don't get me wrong like mm -hmm. it happens everywhere um, but there's also just stories where they're just like. Uh, you know, like Miss Rhodes, like, you know, I think I'm pregnant. I'm just like, oh gosh, you know what I mean? Like, those are like things that I'm just like, that is not drama. That is real. Yeah, that is, <laughs> We got to yeah. talk about that. But yeah, it's also funny too, because I don't really like the, the drama thing when it does happen is I don't know how to relate to that because all like my core group of friends in high school were boys. And so I, and like, I was really ugly and I talk about this in my stand up, and that makes it really hard for me to, to like girl, like when they're just like, you know, Miss Woods, what would you do? This is a joke I do where I'm just, they're just like, what would you do if someone took an ugly picture of you and posted it everywhere? And I'm like, <laughs> my mom did that every Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But I did Check and, the yearbook guys. Yeah. yeah. And also, like I was like, uh, granted, we also didn't have those problems because we didn't have cell phones when I was in school. Mm -hmm. But then when they were like fighting with each other about stuff, I'm just like, I, I honestly like, I was like, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of this in my life. Like there was a lot of broken hearts when I like would tell my friends that were boys like, I like you, and they're like, no, 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 <laughs> you know. But other than that, like that is also what's funny is I'm just like, I think that they don't come to me because they're like. Rhodes is just going to tell you to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> She's the ice queen, man. <laughs> Same piece of advice at Rogers yeah. and at your school. Yeah. So, so real quick, you're teaching kids. Um, kids are hip. How do we, What? how are the kids partying right now? How can Connor and I become more yeah, hip? How can we we become are you asking me how you can party with kids? No, 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 no. How can we, we party, like party like, like kids? kids. Yeah. Um, so what are they like? It's funny too because that's also that is something that is disturbing to me is how open kids want to be about their after school, like their recreation after school. We're like, oh man, Miss Rosa got so drunk this week. I'm like, please stop. Like, you cannot tell me that. Yeah, you can't. I'm like, you literally can't tell me that because I have to tell a counselor. Like, I'm going to tell a counselor. You just told me that. So in the future, if you don't want a follow up meeting about what you just said, don't just don't tell me. Um, but. They, I always, like, it's funny because I'll ask them, like, so you guys, like, going to the mall this week and hang out? And they look at me like I'm an idiot. Jeez. They're like, what? Wait, it sounds like you're asking them. That. It sounds like you're, like, bringing it up. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm trying to, like, I'm just like, hey, what you guys got going on this weekend? You know, yeah, I'm like, yeah. just trying to, like, be cool. I'm like, you guys uh, going to the mall? They're just like, what? No. Y'all going to catch a flick? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, they do go to the movies, so they'll go to the movies, but a lot of times they just, like, they hang out, like, at each other's houses and, uh, they make they make a lot of like YouTube and Snapchat videos. So whatever you so do, you have to create content. Record it. <laughs> you do that. And then, we're partying like the kids already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of my one groups of my kids snuck in. They showed me this this whole YouTube video they made of sneaking into the hotel that's over there by the the one right by Memorial City Mall because I work over there. So there's that like nice hotel right there like off I ten and Gessner, and it's oh, them yeah. like sneaking in and running around and eating. <laughs> They're like in this like like really nice like dining room or something that it's like small but they're like they're just like they have this like water burger spread <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. Um, and they're and they have all these rules it's very they're very funny like I like that they they try like when they talk to me like so for example water burger dinner at the hotel um, one of them was telling me about it and they're like Miss, R Miss Rhodes when we started out that dinner we made very strict rules uh, no one was allowed to be on their phones Everyone had to have had their phones either put away or to the side of the table turned upside down. And we were just going to enjoy each other's company. But 
Jennifer was on her phone like the whole time and we brought it up to her that was against the rules. She just didn't care. <laughs> what? And, yeah, no, and I was just like, I'm like, oh, oh, cool. So what I try to get you to do in class every day. <laughs> yeah. <you> first. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's it's like, awesome. Good luck. I can't get Jennifer to put her phone <laughs> yeah, down. Exactly. Like, I don't have How to did you do it? Through your phone is French? literally in your hand talking yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. you won't believe this. Yeah, you won't yeah. believe this. Yeah. And, but it's like they, they, all these like little like excursions they do, they, you know, like once they, one of them can drive. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, but it's a lot of just like, they re like they just like hang out. They make like they make videos, like goofy videos with each other. A lot of them do like music stuff. Oh. I'm always like surprised at how many of them like tell me that they're like, oh yeah, I make music or I make like goofy videos or here's a video of me dancing. Like, <laughs> um, it's really crazy is that you kind of see that sort of technology part of it makes them want like does make them be like creative in their own ways and you see that how like that's changed because like they're they're like really you know like i think i was listening to a, a story on another station today and um <laughs> they was like talking about like youtube stars but i mean i remember kids asking me one time like oh yeah you know blah 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 and i was like mm, i don't know who that is who is that are they in a movie <laughs> She's like a super big YouTube star, and I literally was like, "That that's a thing." Yeah, that and is, a couple of really short movies. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's like a big. But so like there, they they do a lot of that. Like uh, girls are really into makeup tutorials. So if yeah. you guys, they do a lot of those. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes in my class, <laughs> uh, when they have free time, like we can do whatever we want right now, and then they just like all this makeup suddenly appears, <laughs> and one of them's like pointing a camera on the other one. And it's like, okay, that's how we're gonna do that's it. That's cool. They have like kind of DIY uh, like stars to look up to because yeah. YouTube is very like you have to make it yourself yeah. you do it yourself so they, they have more better than like looking at Johnny Depp yeah. like one day I'll be in the movies well, like yeah. they no, actually have a, a smartphone digital literacy is through the roof yeah I was I had them do a project at the end of the year because I taught 10th grade last year and they had to do like the like ethos logos and pathos like the, mm -hmm. the basic rhetorical appeals and they had to make a print ad and a video ad they had to make a product which was oh my gosh we're, we'll talk about those products because some of them, I'll tell you my I, my favorite winner, and I'll send you guys the video of the ad because it is phenomenal. Please, please. Uh, Marlin, Could we share it on our Marlon Marlon made it public, so yeah, I'll I'll make sure I email her and ask her if you can 100% do it, but I'm sure she's fine with it because she wants more followers. So, <laughs> well, so we don't have many, I let but them, yeah, we'll they, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. So they, I let them create, they had to create their own product, which I was really nervous about at first because I just thought, man, they're not going to do this and they're just going to, you know, whatever. And they... It was just like, I felt so bad for how much I discounted how much kids want to be creative, you know, because they came up with amazing things. And all of them, like, uh, they were just like, and it was so funny because they're like, Ms. Rhodes, how do you make a commercial? And I, it was like the first time I'm teaching, I just go, I don't know, Google it, look it up on YouTube. <laughs> and they all did it. And it was like the I, the first time I was like I like learn, as a teacher I'm learning like sometimes I need to hold them to higher expectations and let them and make them like suffer a little and not hand them everything that but I know that it's out there because I know that there's videos on YouTube of how to do something you know what I yeah, mean like, yeah. I know that I'm not leaving them with nothing and kind of like making them teach themselves which I, which also is a valuable tool like a lot of things that I do in my classroom people are like how, like when like I make my own clothes and people are like how'd you learn to sew I'm like I, YouTube like, yeah, like literally yeah. that's how I learned to do it like I watched YouTube videos and was like oh this is how you do this so speaking of the clothes thing we wanted to ask you you make all these dresses mm -hmm. uh how much fabric do you need to make clothing like say matching shirts or something mm -hmm. ha <laughs> um and money let's put it yeah, that um, way. yeah yeah for shirts i don't know because i've never made a shirt before Sh shirts are like hard they're like because, really short dresses right <laughs> right yeah exactly i mean like if i made like a pull it like buttonholes like this whole yeah, thing yeah. is like difficult um yeah, yeah and like um but for like a dress probably depending on like if i want like i mean a circle skirt or a pleated skirt just like different things two and a half to three yards oh we got okay. plenty of that so we have this large swath of minion uh <laughs> fabric oh is that, it a bed sheet is it a bed sheet i, did, I just grabbed the fabric yeah. i got it for a, a toga party and i wanted to be the best toga <laughs> so i got I wanted, minions <laughs> i got the minion yeah. yoga are kids into minions in high school yes like, they still are they still are yes they're into minions Perfect. they're into pizza cat they're into wait, wait, wait. what's pizza cat Samurai Pizza Cats, the Wait, old anime from the that, 90s. No, I'm that, I'm yeah. Samurai? <laughs> Just it's a, oh, I don't know if it's a cat or cats, but things that have cats and pizza in space, Ugh. backpacks, <laughs> pants, shirts, they're all about it. But I have to tell you about this product because it is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Please, Gotta please. give a yeah. shout out. So this is the one group that I like loved the most. I'm going up to them and I'm like, hey guys, three of my, four of my like standout favorite students. 
what did you guys come up with? And they immediately just launch into the pitch. Like, don't you hate it when yes. <laughs> you try to pick up your baby and its arm falls off? <laughs> and I was just like, go on. I'm listening. And they're like, introducing baby tape. <laughs> so, baby tape is for when, you, and who is this marketed to? Teen moms. <laughs> I was like, this keeps getting better. Remember, uh, their tagline was, CPS won't suspect a thing. <laughs> oh, man. And that is just when I'm like, you guys are amazing. And then their commercial is literally like a baby falling apart. And then one of the kids taping the baby's arm on and then waving the arm like, look, I'm okay. You have to send yeah, that to us. I was so, oh, it was so, uh, it was so, it was so good. But like, that was like, but so many of them, like they weren't the only one. But there's so many of them. One of my other favorites was this. They made this like just regular sports drink. But at the end of the video, we're watching their commercial. And they're like, you can get, you know, your healthy drink or whatever it was called at, you know, like Walgreens at Walmart and your local gym. And then there, it said something really quick in Spanish. So it's like, you can get it here, here, and here. And then it was like, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, what did that say? And like, we don't want to tell you. <laughs> I was like, is it inappropriate? Like, no, like, it's just. This is, we're just being weird, Miss Rhodes. And I was like, okay, what does it say? So in Spanish at the end of this, so imagine it says like, you can get this here, here, and here. And then it says like, you can buy it here, you can buy it here. And it, or I'm sorry, sold here, here, and here. And then the tagline in, in, his, in Spanish says, also sold in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. I thought it was going to be like at Dusty's house or something. No, yeah. no that's awesome. So hard. I was like, it says also sold in Spanish. So when we played it for all the kids, all the kids were like, what? <laughs> oh my God. I doubt every time it played, I laughed so hard. That's a hard. good joke. Yeah, yeah. But it was so funny. But like, that's the thing is like, you let them do that. And like, I know it sounds like cheesy, but it's like, it's so crazy. Like, when you like, I try and try and try so hard to like let them be creative as much as possible. And there's always that balance where. I wish I was the perfect teacher where every moment of my class got to be creative and I prepared my kids to take the AP test. Mm. Like in a world that would be, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not there yet. And I don't really know many teachers that are there yet that work with the like population that I work with. And so like I try to find as many avenues to let them do that because they get to see themselves shine too. And it bring it's what brings them back. Um, and it just makes, I mean, it makes everything more fun. So yeah. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Have you been able to see these students grow up? Like you've been teaching five, six years? Yeah. So the students I'm teaching this year, actually, this was the first year I taught them because I changed schools last year. Oh, okay. And so, the, but the students that I taught, so the first school I ever taught, I taught freshmen and I didn't get to, like I left after that year because I just wanted to work somewhere. Like I was working in a Tuscasita and I was driving from Montrose to a Tuscasita. Was not going to happen. Yeah. And then um, I worked at the school that I worked at Springwoods for six, seven years. And, uh, those kids I got to see, like I taught two, two of them, I taught them their ninth grade year and then they had me again for 10th grade <laughs> and then I saw them graduate and then I saw some other classes graduate. Oh, so nice. yeah, no, it is. It's really cool to see. It's crazy how they grow. One of my favorite kids that I taught the first year I was at Springwoods, Tony, it was crazy to see his transformation from, uh, like ninth grade to 10th grade. Like I remember he walked to my classroom for 10th grade and he was a completely different person. And then one of my other students, Matthew, who's actually at UT for, um, he got a full scholarship for film and television. Nice. Uh, he's like, a, he's just got an amazing mind. Like just really, like really super hilarious kids, super talented, like acting, singing, like every video, like he made all these videos for my class just because he like, he was my class, but he was a kid first semester of my class hated me <laughs> like stayed after class one time to like yell at me um because he was like but he was like very full of emotion a lot of kids yell at you and you just have to be like okay like you have to just take that on and not take ego to it because they're 16 they don't know how to process emotion you can't hold that against yeah. them um but then comes back in like the second semester and was like so mr Rhodes, i heard you're gonna do your book next year or newspaper can i be on staff and i was like <laughs> you know i'm that's me you got to spend more time yeah. with me. But then after that, he was like my favorite student. He became like my student Aww. aide. Like, uh, he wrote me, like I wrote him a long letter when he left for, you know, I still talk to him. He like has come to shows. Uh, I still like, I see him like, um, on a fairly regular basis, but I just like, I love him. And it's just so funny to think like that kid, like I just remember him. Yeah. He made my life like a living hell for like six weeks. <laughs> That's yeah. very hard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it's about that time. I got to go into our new, our latest segment here. Let's get this up here. 
You guys are really fun to talk to. Yeah, no. This is the first Thank time you. we've ever had someone not talk about parties. Want a new plug? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, didn't about <laughs> you didn't get to it. <laughs> what kind of shows do you want to talk about? All right, Dusty, what do you got to plug? Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, so if you um, go to... Go to F and Rager if you want. Come to the Moth, but I'm so sad to say that because I know that that probably is not great. Technically, we can't promote that show, so you go ahead. Oh, yeah. oh, you guys can't promote on your own show. Well, don't Say promote what? Well. Yeah. No, oh, I remember. Oh, I remember that was the thing. Anyways, um, there is the Moth. Um, there is like, um, come to the Red Yards, check it out. It's every Monday. Um, you can listen to this show and then head out there afterwards. We go until yeah. midnight, um, and you'll still see good comedians. Um, every first Saturday of the month is Wheelhouse, which yes. is the show that I yes. um, do where it's comedians come up and they do a challenge. Um, I already have the show booked. Also, really, really, really big thing that I want to plug is on August, it's it's the last Monday. It's during um, an anniversary for a, the Red Yards, the bar that we're at. But that Monday will be a showcase of all the best Red Yards. It's Ooh. like um, the best of Red Yards. It's um, August 20th. Um, and it's um, so it'll be a show where I feature and it's only going to be a two hour show, but where I feature some of the best stand ups that have come out of the past year at Red Yards. Oh, and so, oh, like, you'll see, great. and you'll see them doing longer sets. Um, so you'll get to see them breathe a little bit more. But it's like a big show. So if you can come out to that, that's the day to come out to just get kind of a tasting menu for some of the talent you'll and see. That's August twentieth. August twentieth okay. at Reds, and it's at, and it'll start at eight p.m. as well. Well, okay. dang, we're gonna head over there yeah. after the show. Then, yeah. 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 Is there any? Uh, can people go somewhere to find more information about that show? Or yes, yeah, so I'll post it. If you like our page, like um, it's the the Secret Group presents the Red Yards Open Mic. But if you just go to Red Yards page two, they're promoting it as well because it's Red Yards Anniversary Weekend, and they're actually promoting like a whole week's worth of shows at oh. Red Yards, including ours. So yeah, but it's Monday the twentieth, and if not every Monday, we're there. But if you really want to see some good talent that night, that's a really strong night of talent that you'll see. Oh, Great. that's fantastic. Awesome. Has Red Yards contacted you about your award-winning karaoke? <laughs> Uh, you want an award? <laughs> All right. Well, the show is <laughs> almost over here. Uh, you know, we can't really talk about karaoke now. Um, you know, <laughs> the song, the, we got to pay royalties, all that stuff. <laughs> all right. I'd like to thank Dusty Rhodes for coming on to the show. Yeah, thank you, you guys for having me. Come back again. There's <laughs> yeah. plenty more ground. Yeah, yeah we haven't like. even talked yeah. about we, parties and cops. We didn't even that. talk about you having a show here previously. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> There's so much to cover. Oh, yeah. we got to go. We're all, right. all right. Well, thank you very much for listening to part one of our show with Dusty Rhodes. Part two will be coming up soon i'm sure thanks for listening bye, bye.